Okay guys, I was trying to film something that totally not about the war in Ukraine. <laughs> I tried to make a script for it at least and you know, it doesn't work. It's so irrelevant right now that I just couldn't film anything um, about something else. So today I'm going to pack my emergency backpack. Also, I will show you how I made carriers for my cats in, in case we have to evacuate ourselves. So of course I need carers for them and I went to a pet shop, the only one that's working around here and it's 30 minute walk one way <laughs> and it didn't have carriers, it barely had some cat food so it was impossible for us right now to buy carriers so we had to come up with some ideas on how to make them ourselves and I will show this. Um, so hope you stick with me. Don't wanna fall in love there was a little bit of a setup change here because you might remember that there was a table standing there just in front of the window i really loved it this way but i actually had to move my desk to the hall right here because um, they say it's dangerous to sit in front of the glass like that can be shattered if there's an explosion or something so i moved the desk there and here we have the dirty clothes bin, how do you call that? And here I actually gathered some of the things that I want to take with me in my emergency backpack. I know that I'm a little bit cut, but who needs the forehead? What I'm actually going to take is something that I usually take if I go somewhere for a weekend, yeah, for just two days. I don't want to pack too much uh, things. It will be heavy to carry. I've been a minimalist and it's really helping out when you have to pack very quickly because you know that you can survive without a lot of stuff. First of all, I want to tell you what I packed on the first day of war when I was really panicking and just trying to gather the the really emergent things one place in case we need to run and escape. I think it was a good idea, it gave me some peace because I knew that my stuff was ready in case I need to run. So let's see what I packed on the first day. <laughs> This was a sweater. I packed a flask with just water. You know, it's very small. A pair of socks, leggings. So cool, I didn't know I took leggings. Okay, and the documents. Folder of my documents. Passports, documents for the apartment. The law structure here in Ukraine is very corrupted. So if you don't have documents with yourself, you can barely prove that this is your apartment or any other piece of property. And that's it. And also I took the power bank with me which is i guess super important because we might just lose electricity at some point as some of the cities near kiev kiev is a place where i live basically so this was my very emergency kit i don't want to take too much with me and i know there are different flashlights and other survival gas stations that you might also need if you are really surviving in a very difficult like natural circumstances I, I don't believe in that situation. I just think that I might need some of the things to move somewhere, you know, for a few days to move to a safe place in case I need that. What I take in terms of clothes eventually, leggings, very thin trousers. What else? I take a warm shirt with me and one more shirt, putting them here, two shirts, two bottom parts, two pairs of socks, two underwear. I don't wear bras, so that's gonna be saving some place for me. I was thinking of what I would take with me as a hygiene item and I thought that these three things would be enough, which is toothpaste, toothbrush, shampoo, some wipes, a pad, but also I have actually the cotton pads that I'm going to be taking with you. Because I don't use cotton pads actually at all, but I use the menstrual cup. I think these ones are good to have in my emergency bag. I was thinking a lot of what I would take with me as medicine, because I don't store much medicine here. I am 23, so nothing to complain about in terms of health. So I don't have health kit or how to say that, medicine kit, my home except this, which contains SPF, something to cut your nails, Q-tips, not very medicine related. <laughs> but what I think I will take is this band-aid or bandage, whatever, in case we need to wrap some injury up 
with it. Oh, probably this one, which is antibacterial liquid. I will not even try to pronounce this in English. I think we will not need anything else. And a piece of cotton. I think this will be enough if you have any injuries. I will pack them later. Documents. And a big bottle of water. I will definitely need to have some containers for my kitties as well. And some of you actually offered me also to take a... Syringe. Syringe. Yeah, I'll take a few syringes without needles in case I need to feed my cats forcefully with water. I heard that they can refuse to drink or eat anything if they're stressed. I don't know if that's true. And some snacks for me and my husband. I will not take much food because Ukraine is full of food. Don't think that we are starving here. If I don't have food myself, I will ask around my fellow citizens and we are very friendly and helpful, especially this time. I'm pretty sure I will find food. When my sister was at the place where there were no electricity, yeah, because the place around the country they lived in was bombed and they were running out of food and no food was supplied. Actually, she just was going through the neighbors and saying, hello, we got kids, we need some food, do you have something to share? And the neighbors were really, really kind to share everything they have because it's the village, you know, villages have like big basements with a lot of pantry and a lot of food in there. <laughs> If you live in village, you will never starve, I think, because then the spring comes and you can seed something and grow something, you know, so... In terms of survival, <laughs> I think villages are a great place to live. People are very kind and I'm pretty sure we'll find food. We will take this much of water with us, not to make it super heavy for us, because you remember we have to carry two cats. Well, in case we need that. I'm really hoping that I actually will not need this backpack and we are not planning on moving actually for now but if things get really heavy here we will definitely think of that and we would just want to be a little bit prepared you know not to take too much time to prepare for us leaving i don't know why but i'm really positive about the situation here i'm just tired of being in sorrow and sadness and pessimistic i just want to be a little bit optimistic even though i'm deceiving myself <laughs> she's got a point so we'll see in terms of a carrier i asked uh, at my instagram page i didn't ask anything there's so much unasked advice these days just saying um <laughs> But actually one advice was really nice um, when I was saying at my Instagram, by the way, you can subscribe if you want it, that I don't have carriers and we don't have pet shops that are selling them right now. I had a few pieces of advice about that I could make a cat carrier from my um, basket, you know, just for storage. And first of all, I started to make this carrier with my basket, trying to wrap it up with a cardboard box. Also, there's one more story behind that. I actually wanted once to remake my one candle, just one candle. So I bought like 50 meters of candle wick <laughs> and used just about 10 centimeters of that for remaking my candle. So now I have 49 meter, 90 centimeters of candle wick. Actually make cash pros of it, but also I realized that it would be a nice decision to use it for my new carrier that I was trying to make. I started to try to like do something with it, make a very solid construction of it. I was realizing at that point that cats have teeth, you know? Also, they have claws. I'm pretty sure that this cardboard box will be... might be beaten, right? Will be, like, beaten really <laughs> aggressively with my cats. This was not a very smart decision of me, because I knew that my cat get aggressive when they are panicking and that's probably normal for cats i don't know tell me how is your cat acting when they are stressed i know that cardboard box is not a solution it's not knowing how stupid my cats are i think that they will just get stuck with their clothes in this cardboard ah it's not a buffalo bag it's a duffel bag damn it and yeah, one person at my Instagram page offered me to use a duffel bag. And I was like, what is a duffel bag? So I was just aggressively googling what's that to translate it. This was my ta-da moment when I realized that I do have a duffel bag at my home. So I decided to start making a carrier out of it. You have no idea, huh? 
it's just a ready carrier you just need to you know decorate it a little bit it just took one of the boxes that we had from deliveries from some of our devices packaging and it started to cut it that this is not my packaging and probably this is my husband thing and I had to ask him before I start to cut his thing. Anyway, he will never know. So I decided just not to tell him about it. <laughs> I was cutting the cardboard to put this down inside the duffel bag to make it a little bit more firm. Before that, I realized that there were some, some weird lumps at the bottom of this bag lumps that were really firm and it would be really uncomfortable for my cats to sit on them. First of all, I wanted to leave those uh, things. I thought this would be really hard to cut the bottom part and get these out, but it actually turned out to be really easy to just cut the bottom fabric that it's at the bottom of this honey carrier. And I just took these lumps out. So basically this was, I think this was just a material that was at the bottom of this bag in the beginning of the times and then I put this bag in the washing machine got me dum dum and they become lumps and put the cardboard inside and then put the piece of uh, fabric inside which is just a blanket and you know what I well claim that I'm a minimalist my emergency kit and my DIY carriers are not the things that I use often actually basically I was hoarding some of the things that I don't get enough use of to use them right now in such a moment when I do need a duffel bag that I never use, when I do need cardboard, when I do need a blanket for my cats to lie on. You know, minimalist is not always that good. You probably need to hoard some stuff that are really emergent, especially if you live in Ukraine, like between uh, Russia and West trying to solve their problems. I now a little bit rethought <laughs> the minimalism thing for me and I was really lucky to have all I need. Even though there were things that I never used before, I used them here to make a carrier for my cat. I have this bandage that I never used and was going to throw away. So that's just a thought that sometimes you need some stuff that you don't use at all for moments like that because shops don't work here now except the food stores and you know the emergency things they are working but all the rest is shut down ah i didn't show you uh, <laughs> yeah this is what this carrier and a duffel bag um looks like so i think it's fine you might want to ask me how will they breathe and i don't have an answer for you yet this will be a question to you if you have any ideas on how they will breathe in that bag then text them in the comments down below if you wonder where i will carry my um second cat probably two cats will not fit in here the other cat will be in just a backpack that we will hang in front of our bodies and we always did that when we had to take one of them to the wet so i think it will work out well except the breathing thing yeah we'll still have to figure out how this will work let me know what i forgot to put in my uh emergency backpack it's actually half empty if there's something i really need to take with me then i probably will so leave me the comments about it and subscribe to my instagram and please see this video which is about my favorite things in this life actually have a good day bye